So now we get to the last module, which is the automation module. So what we've seen up to now is the data mapper, the designer, as well as the output module. Now it's time to put them all together and automate the whole thing using what we call workflow. Now the center of the screen may look a little familiar because it kind of looks like the process, the extraction process that we have in the data mapper module. In this case, however, we have a lot more power and we're working with a completely different scope. So what I mean by that is the uh, process actually works on a complete data file or on parts, depending on what you need. There's a series, a wide variety of inputs, outputs, and action tasks that you can use to create the process. And in this case, imagination is probably your only limitation. So here, more specifically, we have the tasks that are used in Connect. Most of these actually corresponds to the different things that we did already in the animations. For example, execute data mapping will run a data mapping configuration that we've created. Create print content, create email content, and create web content will generate the output from these contexts. And the create job and create output will use the job and output presets that we created in the output module. There's a couple of other tasks and we'll see that in the following animations. So let's get to the task of creating a standard kind of basic printing process. So if we look back at the walkthrough um, animations that we did, the data mapping configuration is actually a TXT file. Where does that TXT file come from? Well, in our example, it comes from an old ERP system over which we now have very little control. We can't change the type of output it generates. The only thing the system does is output line printer data to a specific printer queue, and that's it. We can't change that. What we're going to do is to start by capturing or hijacking this print output and use it in our workflow. To do this, we're going to use the win queue input. Now, the win queue input captures the data that's incoming on any printer. And it's going to output in either the raw format, whatever it captures, or as a PDF. So what we're going to do here is simply capture the raw format, meaning whatever comes in. And we know this is the line printer because that is what the ERP outputs. So now we have our text file. The next step is to obviously run the data mapping on it. So for that, we just use execute data mapping. Now the data mapping configurations that appear here are the ones that were sent to Planet Press workflow. So the data mapping configurations that appear here are all the ones that were sent to Planet Press workflow using package file. So when you do package file and you say like data mapping designer and, and all the presets, this is where they end up. This is only the data mapping configuration. So if we select the TXT data mapper take a tour, which we created in there, and we click on OK. So the first step is complete. Every time that printer queue receives a line printer job, it runs through the data mapping. And what outputs from that is a record set, one record for each of the incoming um, invoices or incoming uh, source records. So what do we do with a record set? Well, obviously, we want to create content from it. In the designer, we created a, a template and that template outputs an invoice. This means that the next step is to use the create print content. Now, again, what we have here is the files that were sent using package file, but in this case, we only have the templates. When you click on a template, you see the preview on the right, just to make sure that it is the right uh, file. So the second step of the process is completed. We have create print content. What the create print content task does is create a series of content items. A content item is basically a part of the job that represents what you created in designer. So it represents one invoice, one letter, one business card or whatever. So uh, the create print content creates a content set that is made of multiple content items. Now the content items are in kind of an intermediary format. It's not PCL, it's not PostScript, it's just that intermediary format. 
Now, once we have those, we need to generate output with them. But before that, we'll use the create job task. So the create job task just uses a job preset and it will execute all of the settings inside of that preset. So if you put sorting and filtering, if you put create uh, adding metadata into the task and all of these things that we set in the job presets, this is where it's going to execute them. And after that, logically, we want to use the output presets with the create output task. And guess what? This runs the output preset. So this is how you decide what type of format you want. So here we have a PDF file, could be PostScript, could be a IPDS, could be PCL or whatever you have in your output preset. Now, since it, this actually generates the output, this is where you need to decide where it's going to end up. The create output task gives you two options for that at the bottom, which is either use the settings inside of the output preset or bring it back into Planet Press workflow. So let's say inside of your output preset, you set it to go inside of a specific printer or output to a specific file. This is what it's going to do. In our case, because we want to see the file, we'll just set through Planet Press workflow. And in the end, we have the send to folder which will save the file, so whatever the create output gives us, and we'll send it to a specific folder. And just because I want to be able to show it, I'll just add a PDF to the file name. So that'll save the file inside of the out folder on the C drive as randomly generated file name .pdf. Now, before you go trying to run this configuration, there's one last thing we need to do. Because Planet Press Workflow only communicates with the server, the Planet Press Connect server in the background, there needs to be some amount of security in between. Um, the Connect server has a username password that is set by default. Anything that tries to communicate with it needs to provide this username and password. We need to do that also inside of every single one of the tasks that we have here. So in any of the tasks, if you go on the OL Connect proxy, this is where you need to define it. Since it's possible to install Planet Press Connect and Planet Press Workflow on two different computers, here you have the capability to change where that server is. So by default, we have local host, but that could be another machine on the network. Also, we need to provide the username and password. Now, this is in the documentation, uh, but by default, the username is OL Admin. And the password is secret. This is all in lowercase, by the way. Okay, so I've set the username and password on all of the four tasks. Um, by the way, if you're administering a uh, Connect server that is used in production, it is strongly suggested to change this configuration or to change the username and password. So the server configuration is from the start menu in programs or all programs. And then you go in Objective Lune, Planet Press Connect, and you have the server configuration. The important thing here is server security. And this is where you can define it. If you're in a completely isolated environment, technically you could just remove the check mark and then you don't need to put a username and password inside of the tasks, but that's really not suggested. So now with that, we have a complete process. It's time to test it. In theory, if you have a print output, you want to be able to print it. Now let's imagine for just a minute that I'm not outputting PDF, I'm actually outputting PostScript and I want to be able to send it to a printer. In the output um, tasks, we have a couple of possibilities for generating output or sending it to the right location. One of the simpler options that we have is to print using a Windows driver. So we're going to send the print job directly to a Windows queue and use its driver. So let's imagine for a second that we're in an ideal world and I have a printer that can natively print PDF files. So the PDF file that I created in my create output, I can directly send it to a printer and it's going to create my print job. It's going to print out that PDF. 
So in the output um, tasks that we have, uh, there's actually a couple of ways to generate output. The one that interests us is print using a Windows driver. So let me just add that to the output. And here we have a fairly simple interface. The printer queue is the printer that we want to use. So let's say the Lexmark printer that I have does print uh, native PDF files. I just send it to it and it prints. I select the job name, which can be random. It doesn't really matter. That is what appears in the printer queue. And I put in an owner name. And this is pretty much our completed process. Now, what we need to do next is to test it. In order to do that, when we test or what we call debugging a process in Planet Press workflow, it's going to ignore the uh, actual input uh, task. So the WinQ input is ignored here. What we need to do is to open an actual data file that would be the same as if we captured it from the WinQ and then execute it through each of the tasks. So here what I'm going to do is to open the line printer file that we know is compatible with the data mapping. And we're going to use this to test whether our process works. So let's do that one after the other using the uh, step option. So the first thing we do is execute the data mapping. And as we see, it completed without any errors. Then we create all the print content. And by the way, this can take a little bit of time because it is merging records with the uh, print context. Then we run it through create job, which will um, sort and split and do all the things it's supposed to do. And finally, we finish by creating the output. Now, if you run this and it takes say a minute to run each task, that's perfectly normal because we're in debug mode. It's not using the full power of the Planet Press server. So don't worry, it's actually much faster when actually generating uh, in production. Now, because I can't show you a physical printer, I don't have a camera and I don't actually have this printer right now, um, we can view the PDF file here. And this is the output that would normally be sent to the printer. We can look at each page and make sure that the data is what we expected. So I stopped the debug because I don't want it to um, actually try to print this. All right, so now that we took the long way around or the scenic route into creating print output, let's go ahead and try to use the all-in-one task. I'll just create a new process here. And I'm actually going to copy the input from the other one. And then we'll drag in the all in one task. So the different tabs that we have here are essentially the same as the different tasks. There's two main differences. Let me select the data mapping configuration, select the appropriate content, and there is no job creation in the all-in-one. It's not meant to be a complex job output, it's for the simple one, so it goes straight from content creation to output creation. So it doesn't do any of the things that your job presets could do. And then the output creation, same, you select the output preset, and you, of course, also have to set the uh, connection security. The other difference is that if you look in the output creation, there's no selection for where the job is going to go. Again, this is for simple uh, printing tasks, and this will force the use of whatever was set inside of the output preset. So whatever folder was set, whatever printer IP address or printer queue was set, in the output preset, that is what is going to be used. This means that the actual output from this task is always just random metadata that we don't actually need, as well as the original input file. So we can just trash it unless you want to have a backup, but normally you can just delete it. And that is it for a print configuration or print output processes inside of Workflow.